for the openness to resurrection hope. Thanks be to God. For the mystery of resurrection truth. Thanks be to God. For the beauty of resurrection life. Thanks be to God. For the promise of the resurrection's eternal liberation. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good evening and welcome to St. James's Piccadilly online and in the building to Sanctuary. We meet in the sacred eight days where the resurrection hope of Easter is particularly intensely celebrated by the church throughout the world. And so we meet in the light of the awesome mystery of resurrection. Gracious God, give us time this night to make a prayer that will become the prayer of our soul. Help us to listen to the voices of longing in our hearts and listen to our hungers. Help us give attention to the unexpected happenings at the edges of our life. Help us listen to our memory and to the inrush of our future to the voices of those near us and those we have lost. Help us to know we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses and give us the eyes of faith to know that we are loved and forgiven and free. Amen. In meeting together and reflecting on our lives and society, we acknowledge in the presence of God our choices and habits that bring injustice and pain to the world. My friends, I confess before you and in the presence of God that the world is broken by the wrong I have done. We confess before one another and in the presence of God that the world is broken by the wrong we have done. May God forgive you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. For a New Beginning by John O'Donoghue. In out-of-the-way places of the heart, where your thoughts never think to wander, this beginning has been quietly forming, waiting until you are ready to emerge. For a long time, it has watched your desire, feeling the emptiness growing inside you, noticing how you willed yourself on, still unable to leave what you had outgrown. It watched you play with the seduction of safety and the grey promises that sameness whispered, 
heard the waves of turmoil rise and relent, wondered, would you always live like this? Then the delight when your courage kindled and out you stepped onto new ground, your eyes young again with energy and dream, a path of plentitude opening before you. Though your destination is not yet clear, you can trust the promise of this opening. Unfurl yourself into the grace of beginning that is at one with your life's desire. Awaken your spirit to adventure. Hold nothing back. Learn to find ease in risk. Soon you'll be home in a new rhythm for your soul senses the world that awaits you. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? For whom are you looking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabunai, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father, but go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and she told them that he had said these things to her. 
hear the gospel of Christ. Thanks be to God. I love Easter time. It's not easy, but it's one of the few times a year when I try my best to block off as much space in Holy Week that I can do to really sit with these stories and tales that are imbued with such richness, holding both solemnity and joy, fear and hope, the past and the future. It's also exhausting. Was anyone else there with me? I'm not looking behind me. <laughs> the thing I've always struggled to do is ironically celebrate Easter morning. After a week of contemplation and introspection, with one liturgical line at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m., thanks to the clocks going back, insert eye roll, we're now supposed to celebrate and feel the wholeness that comes from Christ's resurrection. Well, I'm sorry, but I'm not there yet. And it only takes one look on BBC to firmly feel that Jesus is still dead. Resurrection is canceled. It was this past Friday night, Good Friday, we had finished the watch service, a service I always find deeply moving. And as usual, I had to race home, shower, shave, throw on makeup, and head out to Soho to minister to the queers through the art of musical DJing. Whilst a 13 mega mix of Kylie Minogue's Padam Padam played, I took a break for a fag in the smoking area. One of the regulars came up to me and wished me a happy Easter. I glared at him and said, I had just buried him, how can I be happy yet? He took it in good jest, and we started chatting about this past week and how he had never celebrated Easter anymore because, and I quote, it wasn't meant for him. I listened as he spoke about how he grew up in church, was part of the choir, and more than anything else missed the music. I struck up a favorite of mine, Give Me Oil in My Lamp, to which he joined in enthusiastically. And before we knew it, about a dozen homosexual smokers were all belting out Sing Hosanna. He asked me after if I was religious, looked me up and down, pointed at me, and said clearly, I wasn't. We giggled. I then told him I had just come from church. He looked at me confused. He said, what do you mean church? I said, church, church. He said, church? I said, church. He said, is in church, church? I said, yes. He said, no. I said, yes. There was a break, a few puffs on the cigarette, with confusion on his face. I've not been to that club, he said, and we giggled again. You know, I am constantly confused and shocked at the number of times I have this conversation. Standing in high whore drag at 3 a.m. with people who feel as though they are not worthy. The outcast, the forgotten, the maligned, how could God want me? or even more, someone like me, how is he going to use me? It's the narrative I always hear. And of course, the irony in all of this is that the God of our universe has an unusual penchant for using the most unlikely people and places imaginable. The Bible is almost entirely made up of stories where God chooses his most unique creations from the super strong man with the long hair, the orphaned kid in a wicker basket, a queen who belonged to a subservient class, a seer that speaks to donkeys, the thief on a cross. Perhaps there is something holy about your life, no matter whether you feel it or not. In today's gospel, we find Mary in the garden crying. You see, she had been there at his death. The disciples who had fled in fear, the ones who had all the pedigree and position to be there had left. And standing resolute, the women stayed. They watched as his body failed, 
They watched as he left and was buried. The Pharisees, Joseph and Nicodemus, the most unlikely men who you would think to be associating with an executed radical, asked for Christ's body from Pilate and along with the women, lay him to rest. Their story always brings me comfort. For them, they were living in the finality of Christ's death. They lived in the hope gone and a new future completely upended. Maybe you are still at the foot of the cross. Our lives are complex enough to know that each day brings its challenges. One day might be full of resurrection and life and joy and the next death and darkness. Our world is a revolving door of these cycles and it's easy to feel loss after Eastertide. When it's the darkest in our lives, those moments in the garden before we have seen Christ, when we feel he is completely gone, we might live with Mary and Nicodemus and all those saints in the Bible who lived on the extremities of humanity, the ones that seemed unlikely to do anything of note, the ones that were fearful, the ones that ran away, the ones that stood resolute, the ones that failed, the ones that carried Christ's body, the ones that hid in fear, the ones like you and me. Let us live in our sainthood, embodying the Christ who is both dead and the one who is alive. So perhaps today, wherever you are, if you haven't seen the risen Christ yet in your life, or you're still waiting by the tomb, Perhaps you're with Mary in the garden in tears, or with Joseph at home, having just buried your hope, or with Peter, full of shame, broken. It's okay. God is alive. And no matter your story, who you are, or the part you have played, whether you see yourself in the story or feel like you don't belong to it, Christ calls us to a place where the word faith finds a whole new dimension and resonance with us. A faith that is broken and fragile, messy and uncertain. But it remains nonetheless. A quote from a wonderful book by Charles Mackesy about a boy finding his way through the darkness. I can't see a way through, said the boy. Can you see your next step, said the horse. Yes. Then just take that.
in some small way, I can relate to Mary in the gospel reading. For decades, living in the real world within its laws, with faith but marginalized, there is a sense of alienation. By chance, I came for a talk to St. James's less than a year ago. The prodigal daughter syndrome of unexpected welcome and belonging from Jesus' church. With all that is dysfunctional in the world, my yoke is easy and my burden is light, was a no-brainer. To accept being a follower of Christ with his countercultural teachings in an individualistic, materialistic-based world. This past Holy Week, from services on Palm Sunday, the Bethany Eucharist, Maundy Thursday, the Walk of Witness and the Good Friday service to Holy Saturday Vespers and All Night Vigil, Vigil, to the culmination of the Easter Dawn Eucharist, everything has been new and unsettling. I can imagine Mary from her sorrow being elated in the presence of Jesus on Easter Day. This is real, but so is the 24 by 7 news, where inhumanity is taking incomprehensible lows. But now I know, like Mary, I do not need to be alone. There is Jesus' church. And this intercession is for us to imagine peace and justice. Let us pray for the earth and her life, for people in trouble, for our city and for ourselves. Christ has risen, hallelujah. As we renewed our baptismal vows with the breaking of the dawn on Sunday, we come to you this evening in thankfulness and awe at our resurrection and pray to you with confidence for help, knowing our prayers are heard by our Father. Jesus, we can only imagine or dream of the agape love that moved God to send you his only son for the world's redemption. This love of the highest level is selfless and sacrificial as your mission in the Gospels show and from your command at the Last Supper to love each other unconditionally. In our sinful state, this real love does not come naturally to us. But by dying and resurrection, we can try to heal and be restored to the nature of God's love that saves and restores humanity in the face of sin and death. Creator God, just as those in authority misused your creation by nailing you to dead wood, so we today misuse your creation. The cross, passive and inflexible, is integral to your suffering and death. Unable to bend with the wind as when it was alive and breathing, help us to have your life in us for healthy growth dependent on being able to bend with change and fractious difficulties outside our control. Attached to our own crosses of negative thoughts and actions, in contrast, we take for granted and discard your creation, resulting in climate change. In this season of emergence and creative energy, as you rose from darkness to connect with us, so the plant and tree roots are connecting in a WWW, a wood wide web. Lord, teach humanity to imagine a world different that the powers of death cannot crush our heart and to change our perspective on non-human lives. Prince of Peace, by being the truth, the world turned against you. The fickleness of crowds turning from chance of adulation to crucifixion is evidenced today by populist politics and social media that in elections can be threats for democracy. Lord, give us the vigilance when false prophets, unscrupulous politicians, 
appeal to base instincts by fake news and artificial intelligence. The power of emotionalism swaying public opinion is seen in groups where as whistleblowers or government objectors, such as Alex Navalny, have truth. Lord, may your teaching of the Beatitudes give voice to those individuals swimming against the tide, imagining their personal truth succeeding, but mocked and killed by those in power requiring a false legacy. Be to them a light showing the way ahead, a rock giving them strength to stand a new order of generosity and joy against lies and falsehood. Uphold, O God, hold peacemakers in war and conflict zones who are persecuted or imprisoned for their beliefs. Jesus, we remember the arbitrary injustice and brutal torture you face. Let us remember the oppressed people of the world. In this world that is universally being ruled by the few, whether in power, wealth, and technology, the alienated and disenfranchised feel the lack of control over their lives more. Jesus, let us keep looking in that mirror, not in our echo chambers, and imagine accepting ourselves and the way we are. As the Pope in his Urbo et Orbi message emphasized the suffering in the eyes of children, we recall Mary in her sorrow at the foot of the cross and all the mothers today sorrowing for their children in conflict zones and to those whose lives have been changed by sorrow. Physician King, we pray for King Charles III and his family for their bravery in sharing their health diagnosis after their years of service, duty, and intrusive scrutiny to encourage strangers to seek medical advice. Lord, give your compassionate mercy to those with harmful addictions, the lonely, homeless, and those imprisoned. We imagine a world where people will be content and settled in their own homes and countries so that there are no terms or understanding of boat people, refugees, or human trafficking in people seeking a better life. Jesus, teach us to be strengthened by our resurrection and to take away with fortitude and joy that we are not on our own but are enveloped in God's love. As you remind us that nothing is done on our own, let us gain hope that we cannot be Christians by ourselves. We give you thanks for your inclusive church, clergy, congregation in this sacred space and online communities workers and volunteers, musicians and activists, for all who contribute for social and earth justice, thinking differently by having conversations under trees. Lord Jesus, I'm sure you will have noticed the need to imagine a lot in our prayers for help to our Father this evening. So finally at Chelsea in May, let even just one person take away the REN project vision of to imagine the world to be different and working to make it so, based on the teaching of your prayer to your disciples and your ministries at St. Bart's, New York, St. Pancras, and here at St. James's. The lasting legacy of Chelsea will be your kingdom come, and sanctuary is no longer required. Amen. Please stand if you're able for the peace. 
Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called children of God. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace. Peace be with those online. Blessed are you, O God, and blessed are your messengers and prophets who have proclaimed liberty to the captives 
and good news to all who are poor. Blessed is your Son, Jesus, who came to make known your mysteries, to seek out and save what is lost in this life, and to heal and bring wholeness by the forgiveness open to all, who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, remembering the eternal self-giving of Christ, we proclaim the mystery of God's presence among us in this bread and wine. Made one with you, eternal God, we offer these gifts of your creation and with them ourselves as we are, so that you can make us who we can be. And now all honor and glory be yours, eternal God, through all ages and in all time, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though, Though we, we are, are many, many, we are, we are one, one body, body because, because we, we all share, share in, in one, one bread. bread. <clears throat> Draw near with faith, and receive the body of Christ broken for you. Amen. Amen. Everyone is welcome to receive communion or a blessing. You can receive the bread and the wine, or the bread or the wine. If you would like to have a blessing, please just rest your hand across like this so that we know a blessing is what you would like. Everyone is welcome here who is here in the building. Please come and form a large circle now around the altar.
Together we pray. God of resurrection power, we thank you for gathering us where heaven and earth meet. Grant us courage to walk together with Christ and to live out your unbounded vision of love, revealed in your presence with us. Amen. Thank you for being with us here at the sanctuary service. We are here every Tuesday, 6 p.m. for silence, followed by the service at 6.25. Please stay with us afterwards for refreshments to the side, and if you are able to contribute in any ways, there are tap donations at the back of the church. Everything is greatly appreciated to help us keep the doors open, the heating on, et cetera, et cetera. Any notices from you, Lucy? Just to say, if you've enjoyed the music tonight, then there's a wonderful concert on Sunday at seven o'clock um, by all of our music scholars. So please do take a look at that at the back of the order of service. Excellent. So before we sing our final hymn, if you're able, please stand as we say this blessing to one another. May the road rise to meet you and the wind be always at your back. May the sun shine warm upon your face and the rains fall soft upon your fields. And until we meet again, may we know that we are held in the hollow of God's hand. Amen.